Hey everybody, welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're talking about The Wake. Welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host, Brent Casina, and today we're going to talk about The Wake. <clears throat> so this is a series from 2014, near about 10 years ago, from Scott Snyder and Sean Murphy. Uh, Scott Snyder, of course, needs no introduction. He's famous for Batman. We have demons on Comixology and Dark Horse Comics right now, Greg Capullo, all that stuff. And Sean Murphy, you know, was known for like Joe the Barbarian, and now he is the architect behind Batman, Curse of the White Knight, White Knight. Uh, Beyond the White Knight, all that stuff that's coming out now. So to see these two creators together got me excited. I was like, I can't believe I never read this before. So I picked up this trade. It's pretty cheap because it's kind of old. And all these older, um, this is a Vertigo title at the time. All these older trades seem to like go down in price a lot unless they're really popular, which this one was not. And I kind of see why. Like the f it's ten issues long, and the first five issues are phenomenal. Oh my gosh, phenomenal. Edge of your seat, phenomenal. Uh, the story takes place in two parts, basically the present, what could be the present, and the far, far future. The present part of the story is a white knuckle thriller about uh, undersea explorers, mermen, it's a monster movie stuck on an oil rig at the bottom of the sea, all that sorts of stuff. Very, very awesome storytelling, awesome comic to read. White Knuckle, like I said, could not put it down. Uh, and then when I got to the second part of the story where it's the far, far future and you're kind of flashing forward to what happened to everybody, why the earth was flooded, all this other stuff, it's all kind of like hand wavy, like, uh, you know, almost like we ran out of ideas and lost the thrust of the book because the first half of the book is what are these creatures, these mermaid things, right? It's a, basically like a half human, half fish, which I'll call a mermaid, sure. That's what my daughter calls them. And what are these things? Why are they here? Why is there a giant one at the bottom of the, the ocean? And what do they want from us? That's what it's all about. While you're drowning in an oil rig at the bottom of the ocean, like almost like a submarine terror movie, right? With these monsters. Fantastic stuff. And you're kind of, you know, this is the first we've heard of them. They're kind of talking about mythology and how this, all this other stuff comes in here and then that story ends and they flash to the far far future they just kind of throw all that away there's one character who's kind of interested and they're kind of setting up like oh well the mermaids dragged the ice caps into the ocean and it f they melted and it flooded everything why did they do that i don't know it's never really explained and then you're kind of left with this feeling at the end of the book that they knew the creators here were no longer interested in the story they were telling for the first five issues. Now, I don't know why that is, but it's very frustrating because that was the story I wanted to read. And then when they cut that off and moved on to this other story, and I thought they were gonna like maybe pick up and reveal all the ends of the mysteries about who the mermen were and why they were here, they didn't really do that. They, they did, but it was not satisfying. Um, Instead, what you're left with this is some weird message about uh, message about hope, about for the future, about adventure, and soldiering on, and all this other stuff. And it was like, dude, that's not even what you set up in the first half of the book. The first half of the book is a freaking horror masterpiece. Uh, you know, where is this coming from? It's really, really strange. So... I was gonna say, you know, before I read the last half of the book that this is a fantastic book. I don't know what happened. I was gonna recommend it to people. I was loving it. And then I got to the second half and now I'm just like, nope, I cannot recommend it to people. I could tell you to read the first five issues and stop there. But, you know, this trade retails for $17.99. You know, is it worth the first eight issues to, to pick it, or first five issues to pick it up for that much? Maybe, maybe. Um, I just know that the ending is, is pretty bad. So this is kind of a weird kind of letdown of Sean Murphy and um, Scott Snyder. It's very, very puzzling why this ended up the way it did. So I'm not surprised that as strong as it was, that the ending, as weak as it is, 
that this didn't evolve into, oh, I don't know, a, um, a movie series or a, a TV series, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's prime for adaptation, that first half, especially as a movie. I feel like it would, that first half would make a really strong film. But that second half just it jumps the shark, as it were. So I really like the first half. I did not enjoy the second half. The art, Sean Murphy, again, beautiful. Like, can't go wrong with his stuff. His design sense is impeccable for this kind of pseudo sci-fi stuff you're getting in the first half. Second half kind of devolves into stuff we've all kind of seen before. But, man, I, I really feel like this is more of the... Like, the back half of this feels more like the seed of what Snyder and Soul are doing in Undiscovered Country, which I've reviewed on the channel before, rather than actually taking the ideas that they had in the first half and evolving them into a satisfying conclusion. All the stuff about um, an alternate version of the United States where everything is weird and, and that, all that stuff is in the back half of this book. And it's like, man, this is done better in Undiscovered Country, even though I didn't like that one very much, but it just, it lost the thrust of the book, which was who are the mermen? Why are they here? What are they doing to us? What's the mystery behind them? Lost the thrust of that by introducing these other characters and not really following up on that storyline. So with that, I got to say, I love the first half of it. And I did not like the second half. So take that as you will. Have you read The Wake? Let me know down below what you thought. Am I wrong? Did I miss all the answers? Was I just falling asleep because it's late at night? I don't know. But it was pretty freaking boring, and the, I went back and read every page, and I thought the answers were non-existent. So let me know down below in the comments what you think of The Wake, and we'll see you guys next time in The Funny Pages.